do you need the best Sorcerer Dragon's Dogma 2 build with insane knockdown and knockback potential, as well as just causing mass amounts of damage, taking down any boss, including dragons, griffins, even the elite special chimeras, as well as being completely universal and being able to swap out different talents and spells, as well as covering all elements, the best weapon that you can get early on, as well as where to upgrade that weapon, how to get those upgrade mats, and where to farm, then I got the Dragon's Dogma 2 build for you. What's up world, it's Utopia back in with another video. Today we're checking out all things Dragon's Dogma 2. Okay, so let's jump right into the actual build. We'll get into the build guide itself, as well as all the farming methods, as well as all the materials you'll need to upgrade these weapons to get the insane knockdown and knockback potential on these weapons, where to go to farm these, where to get those mats, what type of gear you should be getting, the augments that you should be running, as well as what classes to level, and all of that. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. We're going to look at different statuses to see what our vocation is and kind of our different abilities as well as our augments here. Now, for the weapon skills, I do run High Salamander, High Hogel, Argoral Flare, and High Leaven. Now, of course, if you don't have these upgraded, you will eventually get there. These cover all of the elements and are my favorite. Now, High Leaven can be swapped out for Thundermine if you do appreciate that one better. However, with Salamander, for example, this is going to do that insane amount of AoE as you can see by the screen here. Again, it's also going to provide that fire and I like it a lot better than Flamethrower as you're able to cast while this is running and it will consistently do tons of damage. You'll see a lot of AoE clips with this. It does really well on bosses. It does really well on just ads in general. It does so well for your team. High Salamander is pretty much a must have. Next up, we do have High Hogel. The reason why you want to take High Hogel is it does provide that ice ability for you. Again, this could be swapped out for the other ice ability. However, Hogel, in my opinion, just provides great stun and CC effects. You really don't have this with any of the other abilities, so I do like that here overall, and I'm taking that over, again, over the Tornado, over any of the other over any of the other book abilities that you can take, or the ones that you can get upgraded, as those just take way too long to cast, and don't really provide the proper CC, and they all honestly are just physical damage. You really want to have all elements here, so this does apply to all of that. You'll see some great opportunities while using Hogel, especially getting those CCs down, as well as taking out slimes. It's a really good overall, it's a really good tool, and it will provide great CC control, as well as a bit of damage for you while you are also encanting other spells. Now the reason why you run Flare, Flare is probably the single-handedly best single target damage, maybe even in the game. As far as I know, it's incredible on bosses, it's absolutely insane on mobs that are super tanky, especially those that roll around, or mobs that just kind of have shells, or are also tanky in general. This is a really good ability, it's so strong on bosses, you'll see there's some cool combinations that you can do with High Leaven, maybe even Thundermine can be there. You don't have to just single target cast like you see here in the preview you can actually do this with a combination of other spells. It also works well with High Salamander if you can get that off and be close enough. It works well overall, so this is my go-to for bosses. You'll see it absolutely decimates bosses. The amount of damage and bars it takes down right away is absolutely insane. It's a really, really, really strong ability, especially when it's fully upgraded. We'll also jump over to High Leaven. Again, I like High Leaven over Thundermine. I feel like it's a bit more of a better playstyle or a more fun player style overall. I think Thundermine is a little bit too AFK heavy, especially when you already have Hogel and Salamander, which are already AoE abilities and kind of do their own stuff. I kind of like to have my own single target damage there, but it also does provide AoE as well, and I like to have this one overall. But again, you can swap this one off for Thundermine if you really do see that fit. Now, core skills, obviously, you can take Magic Bolt, Galvanize will be there automatically. Quick Spell is definitely one you're going to want to take right away and Levitate, but these were already well known. The core skills, you just grab them as you go. I didn't take the one other one, but you can have it. It's not a big deal. The biggest part of this now is the Augment section. You will see that we currently are will use three Augments. However, we're going to replace Asperity. We're going to be using these two for sure, which is the Catalyst and Saga City. So we're going to be using both of those, but we will be replacing Asperity on that. Again, I'm going to show showcase what you need to level for each and the new abilities or new augments that I'm using overall. So we do have Asperity, again, that's going to be replaced by a Dominance or Lethality, which I'll talk about in a minute. We're going to take Catalyst and Saga City. Both of those are with the Sorcerer Vocation. We're going to jump down to Endurance, which you will need to level Archer all the way to level 4. And so that will increase your max stamina. Once you get Archer level 4, you have to equip it at the vendor or at the gear person. You have to equip it at the Vocation. Just remember that's a tip there. If you do not equip it, then it won't show up 
in the actual section to use on your sorcerer so make sure you are equipping it at the vocation location jumping down next we have subtlety which decreases the likelihood of being targeted by foes you will get this at level two i believe rank two on thief which is insane for your tanks it's really good for not being targeted it makes it so you really don't have to upgrade your gear as much because you're not going to be getting hit as much because you're going to be decreasing the likelihood of being targeted and you will be stealing aggro pretty fast without this one especially with how strong our gear is and if you don't have a good tank with a lot of the targeting or the taunting that it has you really want to want to take subtlety for now i have gratification this is just me getting art or me getting thief to level four and so if you want to do that for now before getting the other two up that we need to replace the two that i have now currently you should probably do that last up we have gratification here again gratification and asperity we are going to replace these with lethality and dominance so the where you do get lethality is on archer rank eight once you get archer to rank eight you will have lethality and you can replace that asperity or the other one which then will allow you to have that augment all the way good and again these are the best augments that you can use on your character so you really only need to level archer thief warrior and obviously sorcerer so it's not terrible on the leveling system there and then for last we will need to level warrior which will get us to rank eight and that will get us the dominance trait which again is great for knockdown lethality which again is on rank eight of archer damage to vitals which is really really good for things like dragons and just in general on certain mobs on their head or wherever their weakness is you do want that vital damage really really good overall so once we get to archer rank eight we can have that lethality trait which is really good warrior has that dominance augment which again is a really really good trait there that is going to give us even more knockdown power than we already have which you'll see with our gear we have insane amounts of knockdown power which just gives us the ability to take down bosses very very quickly as they stand still and even mobs in general this is just going to give us a ton of knockdown power probably again more than likely is the best trait in this game is knockdown power especially for bosses jumping over to our gear very quickly you will see we have the line Lord Archer Staff. You will get this at the Elven location, so be sure to check out that area. They have a lot of stuff there for gear-wise as well if you do want to switch out some gear stuff. I'm not going to go over too much of the other gear, only the weapons and the rings, but if you wanted to get some better gear there, they do offer really good gear for defense stuff. For right now, though, mostly we just care about our weapon, which is the Lion's Lord's Archer Staff. Again, I do believe there might be one better, but it's way later game or something like that. So this one's good for now, and it's actually accessible really, really early on. It is a bit of gold. I believe it's like 56,000 gold overall, but it's not terrible. And so this is really good. This is going to give us a ton of really cool stuff with it. It's the strongest magic damage, and it also has an element of 10%. So our high 11 is going to do a lot of damage. And again, I will show the upgrades in a second here and where we're going to go to upgrade this staff and how to farm those. all those upgrades as well as getting the upgrade materials for that and where to get those. Jumping over, we do have Ring of Percipients, which the Ring of Percipients does allow us to boost the magic damage. I do have two of these, I believe, or maybe only one for right now. I believe this one was bought at the Elven section, or you can buy one there. I may have looted this one. There uh, is possible to loot one and buy one from the Elven section, which brings us on to the Ring of Vehemence, which gives us a likely to stagger and knock down foes. Again, we're just step applying a lot of knockdown here. This one I looted, and then this one can be bought from the elven section which again you could have both of these on if you wanted to stagger and have even more stagger although i did want that magic damage which i think is pretty good overall and kind of gives us both balance there however you can put both of these on at the same time and you can get even more stagger for that but these are probably the best combination overall so far and so i do believe that these are going to be the go-to for damage wise this class we really want knockdown knockdown power is good for every class because it makes bosses and, bo and mobs stop moving overall and so these are really really good we're definitely going to want to use these overall let's jump over into our upgrades so where are we getting all this knockdown power on our weapon well we are getting it at this location here which is the wind walkers home this is in the bottom section of the map you'll see it's kind of down here now this is past now you're not going through this way you got to go down through this way into this cavern here and into this cave you'll have to escort him he'll be right here once he's here you'll have to escort him pretty slowly through this section and you'll get up into this section here which eventually he'll take him to volcanic island camp which is a pretty cool campsite you'll check it out once you take him to volcanic site he'll be he'll go back 
back to his home and so you'll want to go back to the home which then once he's here he will offer the dwarven upgrade system which is exactly what we need for knockdown and is the best as far as i'm aware is the best abilities or best ways to enhance your gear overall and this will give us the most amount of knockdown power i went ahead and bought a second staff just to show the upgrade materials and how you can enhance this equipment so you see we have another archer staff here for our first upgrade we'll just pop it in get and it's only costing gold next for our second upgrade you'll need a bolt scale and astrocyte now for the bolt scale you will want to head south from the elven village here then you'll head down into here through this section here this is where you'll find the bolt scale you can farm these they're partially in the cave there is a little rest spot here so you can rest at a campsite and rest for three days then you'll want to return to the main menu and then come back in and you will be able to go and then farm those here then after you can farm you head again head back to the campfire rest up a bit head back to the main menu come back in you'll be able to farm those here they will be in the cave as well so you head in the little cave it's pretty small and then you can head to the end section there are some chests in there, so also a pretty good site for that. Next up, we'll show where to get the Astra site. Astra site is a little more open-ended. You'll want to head into Batal, and you'll want to go out at nighttime. I believe it's in this section mostly. At nighttime, you'll want to fight the Phantasms or Phantoms. They're both kind of the same enemy, but they're in different locations, or they're not the same enemy. They don't have the same drop tables. One drops Oily Slime, I believe, but they both have the potential to drop Astra site, I believe. So you might even be able to do that in the regular green section. You're right about right above Vern. However, you can head over into here and get that oily slime as well as the astrocyte as long as you're farming at night. Again, it is those things, those little ghastly things that move around and kind of cause the little ghost stuff. That is what you want to farm. Those are the enemies that you want to down, the little ghost things, and they will have a chance to drop astrocyte. For the third and final upgrade, you'll need black freakish mane as well as freakish mane. Now, this comes from Chimera and you will be able to fight those bosses. There are a few locations for there. I'm gonna go over a few of those locations for that specifically, as well as where to find the Black Freakish Main, and then I'll go over where you can actually find that one in a cave where it is located. The map quickly, and this is in the Waterfall Cave here, this Waterfall Cave here. This is where you can find the boss, the Black Chimera or the one that will drop the black freakish main, which I do believe is in this boss room here. So you'll just head into this cave and head to this boss room section here. And again, that's all the upgrade materials you'll need to upgrade this weapon to its fullest potential and get the insane knockdown power that it has already, which you'll see is just absolutely insane from its original state, although this is upgraded once. You'll see that it is an, a ton of knockdown power that you're adding to this. And this is the only one that adds the knockdown power is the Dwarven location here, or this Dwarven smithing. Again, you'll have to do that mini quest line to get this and get it done and take care of it. So that way you can upgrade your weapon. That should cover it for the build guide. That should cover everything. Where to get the build materials, the augments, the spells, and everything included. As well as how to get the game running overall. And you'll see we do insane amounts of damage. In fact, most of my footage is only with two or one upgrades. Not even the third upgrade. So you'll see that we're going to even do more damage later on. Once this is fully upgraded. Or you will eventually. But overall, it should about cover for today's video. If you like, like, subscribe. And until the next one. Deuces.